coming and thank you very much to Bradley and Peter for uh, first organizing the event and arranging for us to have this lovely space. So let's give a round of applause to those two. Yes. <laughs> And um, let's go on the overview. So what I'll be doing is, in a meta sense, what I'm doing right now, the overview first. And then we'll be going into an introduction to effective altruism for anyone here who isn't familiar with the movement. We'll transition into the summary of the event, which is effective policy change. And then we'll go on to the speaker introduction, where each speaker will be introduced and uh, have a moment to, uh, to, to talk for a few minutes about their perspective on this, this topic. Um, and, and I'd ask you to applaud for them each then when I introduce them. We'll go into a broad discussion. I've got some questions prepared, and um, we'll see what comes from, uh, from the initial five minutes. And then we'll be giving them each five minutes to conclude their talk, followed by a Q&A where you can all contribute questions. Now, there'll be a link in which you can contribute them. I've got a little app online so I can see what you can contribute, and you can upvote other people's questions. So when the discussion starts, I'll throw that link up, and you can start putting in questions once you hear what they're starting to say. If that doesn't work, we'll go with the old tried and true methods of raising our hands. <laughs> Uh, and after that, we'll open up the floor to everyone just talking and chatting and having a good time until uh, 9 o'clock, which is, I believe, when we finish up here. There will also be pizza later. <laughs> Introduction to effective altruism. Now, as I'm sure many of you already know, uh, and for any of you who don't, effective altruism is a growing movement dedicated to using reasoned evidence to do the most good possible. Um, by selecting the correct cause, and this is very difficult, but also very important, we can actually improve the good we do by orders of magnitude. I prepared the best sort of graph, one without a scale, <laughs> that talks about the expected impact and then problems in order of impact. So if you'll notice, there's a long tail skewed to the left, um, where there's lots of problems that have some positive impact, but not much. And there's a few problems that if we dedicate our resources to solving those, we'll have a large positive impact. Again much higher than we could with any of those other um, causes combined. Now, there's a danger in politics that not only do we want to prioritize our causes towards the high performing ones, there's disagreement about what the right causes are to the point where some of the causes may actually look like this. Uh, pursuing a particular policy change may actually make the world worse, and I suspect we have a diversity of opinions about what that might be on our panel. So I suspect that'll be something that we can touch on during the discussion about how we identify things on this end and things on that end, uh, and whether or not we need to be particularly risk averse in a political setting as compared to doing good in other areas, where the worst case scenario when you're giving to most charities is that you don't do as much good as you could, rather than actively making the world a worse place. So transitioning now specifically into politics, there are three guiding principles. <laughs> Tricky there. Before we transition into politics, there are three guiding principles that are, are foundational to deciding what cause areas we as effective developers <coughs> should investigate. Those are importance, solvability, and neglectedness. If you read the EA website last year, it would have been scale, um, tractability, and neglectedness, but they've changed the words, and so have we. So uh, importance correlates to scale, and that basically means that this cause will progress, um, well, correct, correction, this cause will drastically improve many, many lives, or improve lives a very great deal if we're able to achieve change in it. Solvability, that's tractability. Um, that's whether or not a dedicated effort will actually be able to affect change. And finally, neglectedness, are other people already doing this? If it's a solvable cause that's very important, but there's lots of money already being dedicated there, we won't be able to achieve as much marginal benefit by putting our own resources in that area. So as effective altruists, we want to pursue causes and we want to pursue methods that are important, that achieve solvable change, and that aren't being looked at by many other people. Uh, now that transition. Effective policy change. Now, if you, uh, any of you follow 8,000 Hours, it's a website that's dedicated to helping people make the most high impact choices when they select their careers. Um, they rated government and policy uh, in an area relevant to its top problems as second on their list of high impact career paths. So this is, uh, earlier this month, they actually wrote it that second on their list of high impact career paths. They cite the uh, uh, public service, political staffing, political campaigning, and influencing, as in think tanks and nonprofits, as examples of possible high impact jobs. Because we're very good at running events, we actually have a foreign political staffer, a member of the public service, a uh, person running for a political campaign, and an influencer on our panel tonight. So we uh, selected those speakers before we saw those four professions, but it worked out very nicely for us. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think we can include from the fact that 8,000 Hours uh, stated this as an important cause area, that improving government policy can be important, 
it can be solvable, and it can't be neglected. Or can it? Hmm. Hopefully these are the questions we'll answer tonight. Whether or not this area of approaching change can actually improve the world in a maximal way, and if it can, what's the best method of achieving that change? All right, so now we're on to the speaker introduction. I'll introduce myself. You may give me applause if you like at this time. <laughs> <laughs> it's never quite so inspiring when you have to ask for it. Uh, so I'm the owner of a uh, consulting firm, the Austin Erickson Optimization Nexus, or Aon for short. Uh, I should give full disclosure, one of the other members of this panel represents a client of mine, the Australian Taxpayers Alliance, but I will remain impartial. Uh, they're not my only client, so I, <laughs> I promise that I will give them a hard time as much as I give the other speakers a hard time, so you have nothing to worry about. I'm also a member of the Effective Altruism Sydney community, as are many of you. And I'm a former executive officer of the Liberal Democratic Party and a former political staffer for Senator David Lionhelm. So my current work is as a consultant, but I previously worked for political parties and as a staffer for a politician. I'm also a mathematician in my spare time. 